Everything started with a chess game. In 1952, the mathematician Alan Turing had an idea. Instead of taking all of those exhausting decisions in a game of chess by himself, he wrote a computer program that would do that for him, which he named the Turo Champ. Unfortunately, the game was too complex for computers available at that time, so Turing decided to simply simulate his own computer program and do the moves following his calculations. In a game of chess, after two moves on each side, there are more than 70,000 possible constellations. Turing could not foresee all of them and had to calculate his moves within the match, which took him around 30 minutes each. After one week the match was finished, Turing lost. But his vision of a machine that can take intelligent decisions won and developed into its own quite popular field of research. Just five years later, AI researcher Herbert Simon claimed in public, the simplest way I can summarize the situation is to say that there are now in the world machines that think, that learn and that create. Unfortunately, 10 years after those very optimistic claims, governments cut the funding of research in AI dramatically, as those promised machines were not even in sight yet. From now on, AI researchers had to heat their offices on low heat, at least for a while. The field of AI went through this cycle of enthusiasm and disappointment again and again. And the big moment of AI was yet to come. In 1997, Deep Blue, an algorithm by IBM, bet Garry Kasparov, the world's chess champion, 45 years after Turing's Turo champ. <laughs> Meanwhile, AI had already entered the public world. There were the first search engines, navigation systems, and companies already saved a lot of money thanks to the usage of expert systems. So, let's have a look at the world from the perspective of an AI. When a machine utilizes artificial intelligence, it acts rationally. That means it takes the best action in a situation given what it knows. Let's have a look at a navigation system. The essential problem it has to solve is to find the shortest route from A to B, in our example between two cities. Therefore, it needs a representation of all the streets between the cities and their distances. Now the system needs some crucial information. What is the current state? What is the goal state? And what is the cost of each action? With this information, the machine could act rationally by advising us about the shortest route, in our example, and any variation of it. But real life is much more complicated than this. Even in chess, with its numerous possible moves and their follow-up states, the programmers struggled, just like Alan Turing and as a board game that is just an abstraction of real life. Even navigation turns out more complicated in real life. Just imagine autonomous driving. How could a car perceive and understand if an object on the road is another driving car or an animal? To do so, research has found a way that led to a more recent big trend in the field of AI. It's called deep learning and can help machines to make very precise decisions. To give an algorithm the understanding of what a deer is, programmers gave it tons of deer pictures to analyze them and find common characteristics. Like this, programs are capable of interpreting their visual environment, which made new AI dreams like autonomous driving much more realistic and led to a huge investment into AI in the last decade. It has been a long way since Turing had his dream of a machine like Deep Blue, with personal assistants, search engines, medical diagnosis systems or spam filters, our everyday life is surrounded by AI, solving problems for us. As these programs are not reflecting on ethical issues themselves, it's still on us to solve those kinds of problems, and maybe they are a good example for some problems in this world which we are still happy to solve by ourselves.